The terminology nooks and crannies, it's, it's not a good one. I'm not a fan. But in this context, well, I'm about it. Let's start off with some surprising news. First off, English muffins are apparently not English. They seem to be sort of like a variant of the crumpet, which if you don't know what a crumpet is, uh, I don't have an answer for you, to be honest, because I didn't look that up. Let me, let me do that. That could be where it came from, but I don't know. But for those of you who do know English muffins, they may be very near and dear to your heart, like me. So let's do this. To start off, you're gonna need to bloom your active dry yeast. Start with half a cup plus two tablespoons or 139 grams of water and half a cup plus two tablespoons or 139 grams of whole milk. And heat those up to 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. Now once that's nice and warm, you're gonna add one tablespoon or nine grams of active dry yeast. Give that a little mix to get them hydrated and let it sit for 10 minutes. Now this is a perfect time for you to get the rest of your ingredients together. Remember, efficiency, it equals a good life. Now in a medium sized bowl, I've got four cups or 480 grams of bread flour. And to that, I'm gonna add one teaspoon or six grams of fine sea salt and one tablespoon or 13 grams of granulated sugar. Give that a good whisk just till it's incorporated. Look at that whisking technique. You know, I do this all the time. I'm trying to think of a name to call it, so hit me up in the comments with your ideas. Next, you're gonna add your yeast mixture to your flour mixture, along with two tablespoons or 28 grams of gently melted butter or canola oil. Now, if you use butter, please make sure that it's melted, but it's not blazing hot. Otherwise, it's gonna kill the yeast. You want it to be just just warm to the touch. And just get into that bad boy with your hands and mix it together until it starts to come together and forms a shaggy dough. Then dump it out on your counter and knead for anywhere between five and 10 minutes or until it comes together and is nice and smooth. Kneading is very forgiving. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just pick the dough up, fold it over itself and push it back into itself and repeat that over and over. That's kneading for those of you who don't know. Then gently roll it into a ball and place it into a lightly greased medium sized bowl covered with a damp towel, not plastic wrap because we care about the planet. And let it rise at room temperature for one hour. Now, once it's doubled in size, you're gonna punch your dough down. Don't worry, it deserves it. Lightly flour a work surface and dump your dough out. Lightly flour the top of your dough and using a rolling pin, roll your dough out until it's about a half of an inch thick. Then using a three inch circular biscuit cutter, you're gonna cut out as many rounds as you can in the dough. Now this is probably gonna equal anywhere between nine and 12 rounds, depending on how efficient you are, but and I know people are gonna be like, well, what about the remainder of the dough? You can always just push the dough back together, roll it back out, and cut out even more rounds, so there you go. You can then transfer those rounds to a baking sheet that has been generously dusted with cornmeal or all-purpose flour if you wanna go that route, but the cornmeal is the traditional one. Then cover that with an inverted, equally sized baking sheet or just a damp towel and let them rise at room temperature for 30 minutes to one hour or until they're nice, plump, and puffed up. Now these are cooked on a griddle rather than baked. So you're gonna need to heat up a griddle or a cast iron skillet over medium heat, lightly grease it, and once it's nice and heated up, you're gonna add as many rounds as you can to the pan or griddle without overcrowding it. Make sure that there's at least a half an inch of space in between each of these, and let them cook on medium heat for five to seven minutes per side. Now if they end up browning too fast, you may have to lower the temperature. So just kind of gauge your temp and see. Uh, they should be perfectly brown by the five to seven minute mark. You can place all your finished English muffins on a wire rack to cool while you're finishing off the rest of them. And that's it. It really is that easy to make your own homemade English muffins. So maybe you're sitting over there with your nooks and crannies, but something feels empty. Something's missing. It's B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So I kind of want to open up the conversation, you guys, a little bit more, just telling you guys what's going on in my own mind and where this channel's going direction-wise. Don't worry, nothing's changing dramatically. But I'm just constantly thinking about how I want to do newer things that I haven't done here before, and I'm going to be filming things a little differently in some videos, and I have a lot of big fermentation projects in the pipeline. I think you're going to like them a lot. Um, I'll give you a hint. Uh, actually, no, I won't. 
You gotta keep things in the down low sometimes, you know? I kinda wanna open up the conversation to you guys a little bit more. If there's anything you guys wanna see me cover, please comment below and let me know. DM me on Instagram, tweet me on Twitter. I'm, I'm kinda new to the whole Twitter thing, to be honest with you. But don't forget to follow me there, too. All the links are below in my description. And also, just another thank you to you and everybody who supports me. Seriously, from the bottom of my heart, I am so grateful and so, so appreciative. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next week. Thank you.